Alright, so this is video three in my backyard with my dogs and I moved scenery because I thought there might have been too much background noise with the cars. The only problem is that um, my next door neighbors are just there. So I'm pretty sure they'll be able to hear me talk. <laughs> and while wow, that's super embarrassing to me, I'm just going to like deal with it. Um, so this video is going to detail how I change my gender at work. So as I said in my last video, <laughs> if you saw it, um, in December 2015, I changed my name in my chiropractic clinic to all my patients by giving them all a Christmas card before I went on leave for the year. And when I came back from leave, I received like heaps of support Heaps of congratulations, and it was a bloody amazing experience. And um, when I changed, when I went to medically transition in June 2016, um, I was it was less clear to me how I was going to tell my patients that I was transitioning to a new gender because people were still calling me she at this point, and, uh, and you know people hadn't caught on that I was trans. I hadn't told anyone either, except for like a couple of patients who had asked. And uh, so I didn't really feel very confident in my abilities to back myself or to identify myself as trans in that community, mostly because I am in a doctor, doctor-patient relationship with these people, and uh, it's just not really appropriate to talk about my own personal stuff with them. And while you know a lot of them I'd seen is, uh, and we knew each other on a certain base, we didn't know each other on that kind of level. So. Coming out as transgendered to my patients was really tricky for me. Mostly it was tricky for me because I didn't want to feel like a creep and I didn't want to be wrong and I didn't want them to pass judgment on me because I felt that would affect that doctor-patient relationship that we had. I thought that might affect the way they thought that I could treat them and that it might affect the way that I, I don't know, like, I just feel like people feel safe with a practitioner that's pretty like bland. And I guess that was all coming from my own fears. Um, and like a lot of messages that I got growing up about people were like, oh, don't talk to that person because they're a bit strange. Or, you know, don't talk to that person because they look funny or they're weird. or And I guess like um, I developed a fear around being different, even though. <laughs> like I am so different and I have been different and I've never been ashamed of myself in, in that sense but was deeply ashamed of my gender dysphoria years. So um, my transness was something that I suppressed my whole life until I was about 28 and a half and I think that coming out at work was a massive challenge to that, a huge threat to me the way I'd survived in my life as a person who lived with gender dysphoria or a person who was trans and had to live as a female body person, I was used to hiding. And so coming out at work was like really scary because I was used to hiding. <laughs> and hiding worked for me up until then. Obviously, it didn't work for me after that. Um, so, yeah, coming out was scary. Um, I knew I had to do it, and I had a lot of encouragement from my name change. So my patient's reaction to my name change was freaking amazing and really, like, improved my faith in people and myself and, like, really helped me accept myself the way I am. And um, so what I did was nothing. I didn't do anything. Why I had a new receptionist start who's super intuitive. She's a psychic. And she was like, look, Jax, I actually can't call you she. Um, there's nothing about you that makes me want to call you she, so I'm just going to call you he, is that okay? She started in May, and I was like, yeah, look, that's great, that's exactly what I want, and um, it's awkward for me to be called she, and it's awkward for me to call myself she, so please go for it. And up at, and I've, around this time as well, my partner was calling me too, and um, it felt great. Anyway, so I started medically transitioning in June 2016. And I basically didn't tell anyone um, because I started transitioning and I was like, this is a deeply personal thing. Um, there's no major changes, so I'm just going to keep going. And I'm not going to say anything because um, I didn't feel comfortable. 
I didn't feel like I had a reason and I didn't feel like I wanted to have those conversations yet. And so it was about a month later that um, patients would come in and they say things like, the most common thing people would say would be, hey, uh, have you got a cold? Do you have a sinus problem? Or like, have you got allergies today? Because your voice sounds really weird. And I was like, oh, actually, uh, well, <laughs> for the first like couple of weeks, I was like, oh, yeah, I've got a cold. Yeah, I'm just recovering. And then I was like, this is stupid. Like, take the opportunity right, to talk to people about this because you're going to have to. And I started saying, oh, my voice is actually changing because I am started taking hormones to change my gender. And I said this to people, patients, and they're like, oh, most of them, there were three responses. One was like, oh, that's great. Congratulations. Uh, I'm really happy for you. And, um, you know, what does the process involve? How long does it take for you to transition? What do we expect? And I would be like, oh, well, anywhere from now, the next two or three years, like that's where most of the changes happen. I guess my voice gets deeper, a little more manly, um, and things like that. And, uh, you know, thanks for being so supportive. And then we'd move on to their treatment. It was really, really good. And I had another response, which was, oh, great, or, oh, okay. And that was it. And then they'd, you know, take the shoes off and put on the treatment table. And, like, you know, just wouldn't say anything else about it. And they haven't said anything about, else about it since. So while they were maybe awkward, maybe uncomfortable, they didn't disrespect me or didn't make it a big deal, didn't make anything out of it, which was really good. And then I had the people who don't have a filter and um, ask me all <laughs> the wrong questions, um, you know, make comments like, oh, well, I can't call you he because you don't look like a he. Well, I can't call you he because you're not a man yet. Or, um, oh, it's going to be really hard to call you that. Um, or other things that were highly inappropriate. Lots of questions about, you know, what surgery you going to get. Do you have a penis? Are you going to get a penis? Um, how does it work? How does your birth certificate work? And I was like, okay. I just explained, like, in a matter-of-fact way, even though, like, a lot of these things I haven't explored myself. I was deeply personal. But I just realized that some people, they just don't have a filter. And some people's minds are very active. And I guess I was um, in a space where people don't necessarily have to respect my personal boundaries. Um, because I'm a clinician and I have to like them or I have to respect their boundaries or there's some, there is some sort of disparity there. And that even could be, you know, a social imbalance in the way society views transgendered people coming through and then seeing me as a lesser person and as someone they can ask these questions to because I'm a clinician and they just go for it. But, um, you know, while some of those situations that I was in, I wasn't necessarily in the best mind space to deal with them. And while a lot of my anxiety was gone, I felt very drained or very affected by these questions. And the best way to describe it is I would just feel tired. Um, it sometimes stirred up feelings of shame and feeling wrong and um, uh, the major fear of disrupting other people's lives and making them fearful or making them worry or making them feel insecure about themselves or something like that. Um, obviously, I have to get over that. Um, yeah, so my receptionists were the keystone in my gender and, cha and name change. I sent them an email in August saying, hey guys, like I'm taking hormones now, things are changing, so I'm going by the he, him, his pronoun and would appreciate if you use this on the phone to patients, with patients in the room, and if you just refer to me as he, him, or his. And um, they took it like that. They were so good and they probably contributed to the biggest, smoothest shift in the clinic. So um, I find when you know, you're a trans person and you request someone else to call you something, people are less likely to take to that well. When someone around you that they are a part of, say I'm in a group of three, if my receptionist is like, oh yeah, Jax, he isn't available 
at that time, when else would you like to see him? Then the patient's more likely to go, oh, well, whenever he's available. You know, they're more likely to follow suit from a group of people. And um, so I found that really effective. And in, in most cases, it was with the families, or sometimes it went both ways. But in the majority of cases with families, the children, they got it straight away. So they were like, oh, you're a boy now. I'm going to call you he. And I was like, oh, yeah, come on. The rest of the world, get with it. And so they would be like, oh, he said do, 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 to the mum. And then, then the mum would be like, oh, yeah, she, oh, yeah, he. And so the kid would start the cycle of everyone calling me he in that family. Sometimes, you know, the kid would, some kids who were like, didn't really want to deal with it or didn't really cope with the change, they would be like, um, so Chloe this or, oh, she said, and then the mum would be like, no, it's he, it's he. And the kid would look really sheepish because they know, like, the kids are really good. They just have the brain for binaries. They have the brain for black and white things. So when you tell them something, and explain things, they're right on top of it. And um, so I had example, one kid came, the parent and the kid came in. The parent said, oh, yeah, the voice has changed. And I said, yeah, because I'm taking hormones. And she got really excited. It was like, that's great. I've got friends who've changed, and it's a really amazing experience. Congratulations. And then she's like, so, blah, kid, do you know what that means? And he was like, no, what do you mean? And I was like, well, I take hormones. that are the same as your hormones because you're a boy. That turned me into a boy. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. And I was like, yeah, so most people call me he now, and it's been really fun. And like, I feel really good. And he's like, great, okay. And then um, next session, like, he comes in, and he goes, hey, Jackson, hey, you're, like, fully a boy now. <laughs> now I've been like a mother, but it's pretty cute. Um, anyway, so the gender change went a lot more smoothly or was less of a interruption I felt than the name change and most people were pretty much fine for it and but it was another opportunity for me to be blown away by everyone's support people were just amazing and I didn't get a dip in my patient numbers like no one I didn't get a big exodus of people leave the clinic because I changed my gender where I was fearful of that and I kind of had accepted it I had accepted that no matter what happened in the external world, in my environment, I just had to be myself and move forward. And the more I became myself over that year, through the name change and gender change, and the more positive feedback I got through my patients' responses, I blew up. Like, I expanded my self-image and my self-esteem, my confidence and my faith in people and myself, my faith in myself, just blew up and it was a really amazing experience um so yeah that's how i changed my gender in the clinic and uh so mostly i have to thank my receptionists and my patients and yeah so